Hi again, uh, let's continue with our page scrolling example with JavaScript and jQuery. And uh, here's our next task, okay? So uh, I've got these links here, and when I click on a link, I want to scroll to one of these background divs, okay? I want it to scroll all the way to the top. Now, I have a problem because the... Um, the links that I have here, or the, they're not actually these guys, these H1s are not even links, and I need to uh, somehow associate that, like clicking on the AAA H1 with div that has an ID of A, okay? And there's a few ways you can do this. Um, the way that I'm going to choose, and I, I like this method, you know, because it has a lot of practical applications in other places, but it's, and it's kind of a simple idea that you can apply to a lot of things, right? Um, is I like to wrap this in an href or an anchor tag with an href, right? Like this. So each one of these guys will be a link. And then what we'll do is we'll put the ID name of the div down here in the link. Okay? So this will link to A, and this will link to B, C, and D. So we'll make that B, C, and D, and then we'll have to close these guys off. So let's uh, paste this closing tag here, right? And the thing that we can do here, and this is like a very interesting feature in jQuery that you can get a lot of mileage out of, um, is we can access this attribute through our JavaScript. So let's do a quick test, right? And actually, you know what's going to happen is if we click on these links right now, they'll actually jump to the, um, the div. And so one of the reasons I like this is if JavaScript isn't working for some reason, usually it's always working, but if it wasn't working, um, our page would still function because you'd be able to click this thing and jump to A or you click this one and jump to C, okay? It won't animate though, right? So we're gonna use JavaScript to cause the animation, right? But if that wasn't working, it would still, it would still link to, to the ID. Um, so what we wanna do in our JavaScript though, okay, is imagine this. When you click on one of those H1 tags, we're going to get this, um, this click action. And actually, I changed this, so now these are A's. So if you click on an H1 child A, how about that? Let's change this to, to this, right? And then we'll make this one look the same, okay? So now, whenever you click on a, a child anchor, that's a child of an H1, which should be these guys. We could give these guys a class name or use nav in the in the 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 um the URL or the selector here right but uh, we'll just do it this way cuz it works on the page here but when you click on one of these guys what's going to happen is we're going to remove the selected tag from all the other ones and then add the selected tag to the one that you clicked on and then let's get the ID okay so I want to find the ID of one of these guys Okay, so I'm going to get his ID this way. Um, jQuery has a, um, a special uh, function here called ATTR. It stand, it's short for attribute, okay? So what I want to do is I want to get the value of an attribute from this element. So now remember, this is a keyword that represents the current object, and in the context of a jQuery selector, um, the current object is the element that you that you clicked on or the element that owns this function right for us since we've got a click function here and the click function was assigned to this element that's identified by this selector then the click function belongs to this guy so this is the a that you clicked on so we apply this to all a's that are a child of an h1 but Inside the function here, the keyword this represents the H the, the anchor that you clicked on. So if you clicked on B, then this is the tag here. So if we if we clicked on B, then you know this you know dot attr is gonna you know href is gonna be you know this value right there. Okay, and you know and you can test that for yourself. Use the console right. So say console dot log you know, ID, something like that, right? And we can refresh it here, um, get the console. There, there we go, there's our console there. And if I click on B, you can
can see, um, hey, actually my, my console's not showing me any, any elements there. Let's try that again. Hey. Actually, my, my page is scrolling, but I'm not getting my console log message, right? Um, but it is scrolling. Why is it not? You know, I'm getting, I'm getting logs. Oh, there's my logs. I didn't have it on logs. I guess I had an errors, right? But yeah, there we go. A, B, C, right? Let's actually clear it and try it again. Um, oh, there's B, C, D, A, right? D again, right? Okay, so so that's kind of working, right? And now remember that the um, the ID here is also, you know, the selector for one of these things, right? So we can find out where this thing is or control it or go to it or do stuff with it, you know, and this, this you know, points directly to that element, okay? Um, so we need to do a little more work here, okay? So we'll start here and then, um, and then we'll, we'll add the scrolling in a moment, right? So there's a couple things we got to know too. So, so, so far we're, we're here, right? And, um, and we've got the ID that matches this thing. So now what we need to do is we need to get the, um, the offset, okay? So essentially, we want to find how far, right? How far, let me go get the browser again. We want to find how far, like if we, if we want to go to this element here, which I think is B, right? It's, it's kind of this brownish color, right? Um, if we want to find how far the top of B is from the top of the browser, okay? And that's called the offset. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll do this, right? We'll go in here and we'll say um, var, I'm going to just call it y. It's like the y distance, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to say um, id. So we'll make a jQuery selector from the id that we got, which should be cool because this should be something like, um, something like, uh, like that or this, right? Okay, right, because that would select one of these one of these elements up here by its ID name, right? Um, and then what we want to do is we want to say offset. Okay, now offset is a function that returns an object that contains the top and the left. So it tells you how far you are from the left and how far you are from the top. To us, the, the left doesn't matter, but the top is what we want, right? So we don't care about the left because we're not moving horizontal, but we're going to move up and down, so we want to find a distance to the top, okay? And then we can do this. We can, you know, console log that just for fun, right? Yeah, might as well log it and see what it says, right? So we can say, you know, y. Why don't we say, um, you know, y equals like that, right? And then it'll say, it'll say y equals and then the value, right? Let's give it a test. So we'll save that. Um, go back to the browser here. Refresh it, open up the console, click on A. Um, eight pixels from the top. Hmm. B is 323 pixels from the top. C is 638 pixels from the top. And D is 953 pixels from the top. Hey, that's pretty good. Let's scroll a little bit and see what it says. Hmm, 638, right? So anyway, so that's kind of working, right? Um, now what are we going to do? Okay, so so we got that working, right? We got our distance. So now what we want to do is we want to change the scroll top. And scroll top is a property that you can set on the body tag to set how far it scrolls, okay? So what we'll do is we'll do this. We'll say, um, and jQuery has a special um, function for animation, so we'll use that here, okay? So um, body tag, we'll do a selector to select the body tag. We'll say dot animate. That's jQuery's special animation function. They give you uh, the properties here, the, the parameters, right? You can, I don't know if you can read that, but it says animate. And then there's a couple options here. The ones that are in the square brackets are optional, so you don't have to include them. The first one is object properties. So we just create a JavaScript object like that, right? The second one is duration. It's a number. 
and then string easing and then function completed. So this function completed is a callback. The easing is a special easing string that you can include. They don't really give you too many options for this. We'll just use the default. And then the number duration is in milliseconds, okay? So we'll just include the first two options. Again, like these are the ones in the square bracket are not required. So let's do this, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, animate these properties over the course of two seconds, okay? So the property that we want to animate is the scroll top, okay? Colon, the value that we want to set for the scroll top is the Y value, okay? So we'll do this, and then, um, and then I think we're good. Let's save that and uh, test it. So we'll refresh. Oh, wait. Oh, there we go, right? Two seconds. Oops, I clicked. I, I got to do a little bit more here, but we'll click there. We go to B, or A, I mean. Go to B, go to C, and D, right? So that's kind of working. Um, let's go back to D here. Go back to A. So that works pretty good. Um, couple things about this, right? The implementation that I have here needs a little bit more work. You can see that we wrote very little code, though. So we got a lot of mileage for the very little code that we wrote, and that's kind of the advantage of using jQuery. Like jQuery has a whole bunch of these helper function functions like click and remove class and add class, um, and then this, you know, attribute and offset and like just all this stuff is built in because they know that you're going to want to use it. So they kind of thought of all the little things that people do with jQuery and kind of simplified it and made a little helper function for everything. Okay. Couple, um, couple things here. Okay. First of all, if you click on the, since the, the animation takes two seconds, if we click on the links inside of two seconds, so if I click and then click again and click again, you know, within two seconds, I'll be adding an animate each time I click, okay? So that means the animations can be doubled up and that will cause a problem, okay? So, uh, you know, if you notice here, if I, I'll refresh it, if I click, 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 click a whole bunch of times right there, um, it kind of works, but actually I, I added a whole bunch of animations in there. So you can see it's still animating back and forth. So that's a little odd. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to cancel the animation in between, you know, or, or after each click, okay? So what we'll do is we'll do a stop here like this, and this will say, hey, you know, um, body tag, if you're doing any animation, stop it, and then add this animation, okay? So, yeah, this is another thing. I didn't get into this, but the jQuery methods, anytime you... Um, well, this looks a little odd maybe to some people, but when you get into jQuery, this looks very common, so I almost thought not to even mention it, but I'll point it out. Um, anytime you call on a jQuery method, it always returns jQuery. So when we say, you know, uh, body.stop, this returns the jQuery object, and then you can call another jQuery method on that object. So it's just like, imagine that this thing was sitting right here in front of animate. Right, so like we're calling, you know, make a selector, select this object, stop, and then it returns the same object here so that the next method can call on it. It's sort of a factory method. I forget the pattern. I think that's what they call it as a factory pattern. Um, but anyway, so we'll save that and let's give it a try. So I'll refresh it here. And then I'll click a couple times there. And then you can see it doesn't go back and forth all the time. It just slides up to the last one that you chose. You know, it gets a little weird if I click quickly there, but I can't really help that, right? Because it starts animating, and then we kind of stop it short. But but anyway, that that is kind of the example there, okay? So if you want to create a page that kind of scrolls on its own, that was a pretty simple way to do it with, uh, with jQuery. So thanks for watching, and I hope that that's an interesting, inspiring example for you.